places. People. History. Culture. Art. The Seven Seas. An ECU student production. I'm Anthony Sherrod, and welcome to this week's episode of Seven Seas, the show where we explore the various and diverse cultures that encompass Pirate Nation. Today, we continue our journey into the country of Italy. To help us do that, we're joined by ECU Italian teaching professor, Anthony Viltro, who, who is here to enlighten us on Italian culture. And later, we'll be joined by ECU professor in the Department of Cinematic Arts and Media Production, Rudy Chu. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for joining us. So you were born and raised in Ohio. Yeah. And you studied Italian language at Ohio State University. Yes. What got you interested into the Italian language and culture? Well, I really wasn't uh, interested at all coming into college, but for my major, you have to take some sort of a foreign language requirement. And so I picked Italian because I have some Italian heritage in my family. And I just ended up really enjoying the classes. Um, and I did some study abroad and was hooked and decided to get my major in Italian. So you spoke of study abroad. Mm -hmm. um, when was the first time you uh, made a trip to Italy? Um, it would have been my, uh, the summer after my junior year of college. I went to uh, Lecce in the south of Italy. Um, so how would you describe your trips to Italy? Like, what did you learn? Well, um, my first trip uh, was, I was taking intensive language courses and it was a program through Ohio State. So I was there with other Ohio State students and um, still being a beginner with the language, I really um, didn't get out all that much with uh, Italians, native Italians. Um, it really wasn't until my second time studying abroad a couple of years later in Siena that um, I lived with an Italian host family and really got more immersed in the Italian culture. Um, and uh, that was really, that's really a great way to um, experience, you know, what the typical Italian family goes through, um, getting uh, those home cooked meals and, um, and as well as uh, meeting, making other Italian friends my own age. So li actually living with the Italian family, um, what, is, what is your perception um, as a whole about the Italian people and their culture? Well, just like um, probably many, uh, many Americans, you know, think the, the, the family is a very tight-knit unit. Um, however, contrary to what, what most people, I believe, think is uh, that the families in Italy nowadays are a lot smaller. Uh, you don't have the, the huge families with tons and tons of kids. Um, the family that I stayed with, for example, only had one kid, um, and, uh, and maybe every once in a while the uncle would come over for dinner, but um, it, uh, it wasn't that great, big, huge, loud ruckus every, every day with massive family dinners or anything. There are several um, historical places. Um, where's one that you would take a class or something that you had the opportunity to? Um, I think that, uh, for me personally, Florence is my favorite. Um, it's, uh, it's really rich with Renaissance history, which um, is, uh, is more, I, I know a little more about the Renaissance, and so um, taking a class there, uh, we could uh, explore a lot of the architecture. Um, there's the museum, the Uffizi Museum, which is um, the, the largest museum in Italy, and uh, it's, uh, you know, where you can find many of Leonardo, Donatello's work, um, uh, all, the, all the real great works of the, the Italian Renaissance, really. Um, Florence was the political powerhouse of Italy for uh, so long, especially through the Renaissance, and so there's a lot of um, old political buildings there. And um, the, 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 the Florence City Hall, the, the building that would be the City Hall, um, now was in the Renaissance the, the palace for, for the, the Tuscan Republican government. Italy is broken up into um, 20, I believe it is, regions, mm -hmm. um, similar yes. to how the United States is um, 
divided to states, exactly. which is capital. Mm -hmm. um, as you travel from region to region, um, are there any distinct characteristics between the people living um, from region to region? Mm -hmm, absolutely. The, the Italian culture is very, uh, very diverse. And so um, really region to region and sometimes even city to city, you run into uh, very different cultures. Uh, most notably, probably through uh, the food. Um, it's really hard to pinpoint what is Italian food because really each region has their own very special cuisine. Um, down south, you might eat uh, a lot of fish. For example, fishing is really big down there. In Tuscany, uh, wild boar is the most common food. Um, Bologna, uh, we probably all know about you know uh, lasagna bolognese or you know bolognese sauces. Always, always has the, the meat sauce. So um, each region kind of has its own innovations with food. Sound like some good eating. <laughs> it is. Well, we thank you, Professor Viltro, for joining us. And now we'll see what ECU students know about Italian culture in this week's segment of Global IQ. It's a very cultured country. Berlusconi is their leader. A lot of beautiful women come from Italy. Well, I know Rome is the capital of Italy. They speak Italian. I know like some of my family members went over there for the military and got stationed there and they say they love it. It's a beautiful place. So I wouldn't mind going there one time. It's very relaxed. They say uh, it's uh, Italy's actually the trendsetters. They actually start a lot of the trends that end up coming over here a few years later. I'm Italian myself. Um, it's a lot of uh, home cooking. A lot of the cooking is a big thing of Italian co uh, culture. Uh, I take pride in that. It's very family oriented, food oriented, and it's very open. I feel that there is nothing that's not talked about there. They love to eat. As far as looking at the uh, architecture, pictures and so far of Italy, you can tell that there's a lot of famous painters, artists, sculptures and stuff like that because they have a lot of diverse and very, um, you know, very detailed sculptures going on over there. We'd like to welcome you back to Seven Seas as we explore the country of Italy. We're now joined by Pro Pro ECU Professor Rudy Chu who is also an independent filmmaker. Um, so we're going to be discussing Italian neorealism cinema. Right. What is the historical importance? Okay. Uh, the term uh, neorealism actually, of course, means uh, new realism, was first used by an uh, influential Italian film critic at that time uh, named uh, Umberto uh, Papero, all right, and, uh, in 1943. And he's not just a film critic, he, he's always also a professor at the, uh, who taught at the uh, uh, Italian National uh, Film School, established by actually Mussolini himself uh, in 1935, all right? And it's interesting, uh, this is one of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, promised reforms that Mussolini actually uh, fulfilled. And uh, the school, and back then, believe it or not, the uh, fascist government was actually very tolerant, or at least more than uh, the Nazis. So they actually uh, had a, a, a left-wing intellectual to run the school, and uh, students include included some of the uh, future master filmmakers, like uh, you know, uh, uh, Roberto Rossellini, uh, Giuseppe Di Sentis. Uh, who did uh, Peter Rice, also a, a classic, and also one of my favorites, uh, uh, Antonioni, uh, Michelangelo Antonioni, right? And uh, 1943 is a very interesting year that also marks the downfall, political downfall of Mussolini, Mussolini. right? And back to the professor, uh, Babero. Babero actually attacked the uh, uh, Italian cinema at that time for its refusal to deal with some of the serious pressing uh, uh, social issues such as poverty or uh, social injustice. So he turned and looked at the uh, uh, earlier French cinema. Now we can label them as uh, um, uh, French uh, poetic realism and also the uh, uh, films like uh, 
you know, the grand illusion made by uh, Jean Renoir, okay? And then he was, so those films become the new models of uh, Italian neorealism. And actually some of their students later works very closely, like uh, Michelangelo or uh, Visconti, work very closely with uh, uh, Jean Renoir, right? So, and the first film uh, of uh, Italian neorealism was probably Visconti's uh, 1943 uh, masterpiece, uh, Ossessione, which can be uh, translated as uh, obsession. Yes, sir. A lot of people believe that uh, this is the best film version of uh, 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 James Cairn's uh, the, the Postman Always Rings Twice. Okay. However, not until after the war, after Mussolini is, is out, and uh, uh, finally the neorealism uh, gained some uh, global recognition, uh, the fame uh, with uh, uh, Rossellini's uh, Rome Open City, winning the uh, grand prize at uh, the Cannes F Film Festival in France. And Rome Open City, Rome Open City actually deals with uh, uh, the collaboration of uh, um, the communists and also the, the Catholics in fighting the Nazi occupation of Rome. Okay, right before actually, right before the American troops liberate the city. Okay, some footage was even shot during the war time and uh, so you, you can see a lot of exciting uh, uh, battle scenes in that film. And also because the film uh, stock, a good film stock was really hard to get during the, film, the, the war time. So uh, Rossellini was uh, using some of the newsreel uh, stock, which gives the film some of the uh, uh, almost a documentary-like look. So, and that become, later becomes one of the uh, major uh, feature, stylistic features of uh, neorealism. So you mm -hmm. spoke of the documentary view. What other stylistic features are characteristic uh -huh. of its um, neorealism cinema? Okay, uh, for instance, uh, besides that, also the filmmakers are usually uh, dealing with uh, ordinary people's life and their value. Ordinary people like uh, you know uh, factory workers or poor farmers, all that. And that's one. And secondly, uh, the storyline in terms of the story structure is actually very loose. Uh, they usually follow the, uh, uh, the, the situation of the characters, so there's no well-plotted storyline there. And also, technically, they uh, like to use, uh, uh, like to shoot on location instead of using uh, studio sets. And they like to cast uh, non-professional actors even for leading roles, which is really tough. And because of that, the story and usually the dialogue is written with like a, a conversational speech or even dialects instead of some brilliantly written uh, uh, dialogue. They try to avoid to use some of the uh, sophisticated techniques like in uh, camera works or lighting or uh, uh, editing and so forth. So the, uh, the style now becomes a very simple but very powerful, almost styleless style that can be used later, you know, uh, used later with a lot, by a lot of filmmakers. And right? to that effect, uh -huh. what impact has um, Italian neorealism cinema play on filmmaking today? Okay, uh, Chinese filmmakers, for instance, they're using that kind of style. And even right after neorealism, you have uh, uh, Indian neorealism coming up. And also uh, some of the uh, French New Wave uh, filmmakers admitted that they are greatly influenced by the style, you know, people like uh, Francois Truffaut or uh, Jean-Luc Godard. Uh, so the impact was really, really great. Uh, later, I can show you a clip made uh, from, uh, well, take, taken from a uh, uh, neorealism film, neorealist film called uh, The Bicycle Thieves by De Sica. And it's, it deals with the story of uh, uh, after war Italy a small family, you know, a young father, a mother, and a li their little boy. And the father uh, needs to get a job. To do that, he needs a bicycle. So he finally, uh, they pound the, uh, the only worthy uh, thing in their family, which is a, a bed sheet, an old bed sheet. And he got the bicycle. He gets the bicycle, start to work, and then right away, the bicycle was is stolen by a group of uh, bicycle thieves. And near the end of the film, so the whole film is about, basically it's the father and the son looking, trying to find the bicycle. And at the end, of course, they couldn't get it back. 
So uh, they, the father, of course, uh, tried to steal one and, and gets caught right in front of the son and being humiliated and all that. Uh, thank you for joining us, um, <laughs> Professor no, Thank you Chu. very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll be right back after this announcement. We'd like to thank both Professor Anthony Viltro and Professor Rudy Chu for joining us and enlightening us and educating us on Italian culture. we also like to thank you for joining and we invite you to um, tune in next week as we continue our journey into the country of Germany. Mm -hmm.